All right, we got a really big box. Well, this is an upside down IBM 360-50 front panel. All right, there it is right side up and uh, it's mostly complete actually. Um, only a few lights missing, this one and that one, which is amazing considering how poorly they have been glued. Uh, most of the switch work, those are supposed to be that way. This is the only one who is not returning because it's missing the blaze on the back. All the address switches work, the input, they work beautifully. Power on, power off. Most everything is working. Uh, and so the only two things I found is this has no pot at the back. But all the other one have and the switch I have to repair so I took it I took it off its frame and uh, removed this one which was bent uh, and cleaned it and uh, interestingly enough that allows me to date it it's January 69 the year men went on the moon. Here is the back side. And most of the switches are there. I have to remove this. The rollers are there. They have cut all the cabling, which is annoying. And all of the lights have been cut and removed also. So I was afraid they had cut the lights, but they didn't. They just took the uh, outer part where the light goes in out and then they glued it very crudely. Uh, so I, all I need to do is to uh, make a, in probably 3D print or, or order to find something that can go on top and make a light out of it. Uh, many, many, many times. So you can tell what the problem tries are. It's all the, commuta the rotating commutators. They have taken a beating, so there's almost nothing left of this one. Uh, this one's gone. This one is intact. And at the bottom also this one is gone. This one's gone. This one's gone. This one is gone too. So they are probably the most fragile ones. Here is the switch that doesn't work very well because it's missing the top. Uh, so I have made some progress here, so I, uh, <laughs> for now I put uh, this nice reproduction of an IBM 360 front plate. Somebody made a 3D version of it and offered it on eBay, so why not? Uh, I found all the lights, so uh, those are apparently easy to find. I got several of them on eBay, so the panel is cosmetically uh, intact in the front then uh, I reinforced the, the frame so I can uh, have it as a static display and then uh, so some parts I bought like the lights so I got some some actually are slightly different there for, for the 370 and some are for the 360 
uh, but I got also some donated. Uh, thank you, Vincent from France. Uh, so I got a few rotators. Unfortunately, they are by 10. And the 360 panels uses either by 14 or by 6. And this one I haven't checked. Oh, this one might be a 14. So I might have one that works. Uh, the switches look exactly like the right ones, so I'll be able to repair my my one switch. Look at that. Beautiful hardware. And then the uh, buttons, uh, those are, uh, those will come handy for the tape, tape drives. I intend to get uh, tape drives from the same vintage uh, vacuum tape drives that would work. So this is the switch that doesn't work because it's missing the contacts on top uh, but it looks like this guy is the exact same type of contacts as this one so There you go, it works, okay. There. I think they will have to do for now. Okay, so this is an imposing panels by uh, any measure and uh, model 50 was a rather big machine uh, at the time uh, and uh, the panel has uh, over 250 lights in it. So let me try to give you a little tour of uh, what every section does. Uh, the panel was uh, mostly used uh, for debug of the machine uh, and, uh, and, and no, not very much interaction during regular operation. Uh, so this here is the power section um, and uh, it has all the pots for margining. So there is 10 voltages that you can tweak there's little pots with a little you know, center switch on it uh, and you can choose any of the 10 and monitor them over, over here and you know, try to create a fault by uh, getting the voltage too low or too high if it's an intermittent fault and uh, actually the 36050 was known to be a, a machine with a lot of intermittent fault uh, so much so that they had a joke about it they say that uh, if you threw a Model 50 in the Hudson River, it would probably sink intermittently. Uh, anyhow, so you have those 10 voltages that you can uh, margin, uh, so you can tweak them around their nominal value. And there's also 10 other voltages here uh, that are fixed that you can uh, monitor. Uh, DC off, turn voltage to CPU, and there's a few thermal overloads and no breaker and power problems lights over here. So that's uh, the power section. Uh, next to it uh, is actually an interesting section over here. This is the uh, storage test. Uh, so you have uh, this button here allows you to write all ones, all zeros, worst patterns, I have no idea what the worst pattern is, or the reverse of the worst pattern into memory. Uh, if you press the uh, right button, it will you know, write it continuously, and if you have also this stop on check, uh, it will stop where it finds a memory error. And there are you know, some other uh, optional buttons here. So that's the uh, for the memory check. Uh, then there's the famous uh, emergency pull switch. So this one, I'll just do it for you. Once you can pull it, but you cannot 
push it back without calling IBM. <laughs> it stays stuck in that position. Actually, you have to unlock it from, from the back. Uh, so beneath here uh, is another power section, uh, which is optional. So apparently this came from a bigger machine, and this is for the auxil uh, uh, auxiliary storage uh, power. Uh, so you have four more four more powers, uh, and that's because this machine was equipped with uh, 512k, so it had an extra 256k auxiliary storage, I guess. Uh, I haven't double checked that, so don't don't uh, kill me if I'm not exact. Um, but you no, know, probably this machine was maxed out with you no know, 512k of. Uh, Core memory, which was quite a lot at the time, uh, you know, 1964 was when the machine was announced. So over in the little corner here is the uh, channel test, uh, and uh, basically that allows you to uh, you know, test channel uh, uh, instructions one by one, and you. You have the choice between the selector channel here or the multiplex channel, and you would just enter instruction by one by one manually. So channels are I/O, and the instructions are defined by this portion here. So that's the main portion. Well, let's zoom in on one of them. Uh, this is 144 lights that display all the uh, CPU and channel status and the two tops are channels and the two lower at mostly CPU and uh, since 144 lights weren't enough they made rollers out of it and they're controlled by those buttons on the side let's see if I can activate one uh, and so these are multiple position uh, eight per roller, so you can display, you know, eight times 144 uh, bits on, on, on that thing. And there's a little cheat sheet over here uh, that tells you what, what status registers uh, or data channel registers you are looking at. Uh, so that's the main uh, diagnosis to look at the bits in the machine. Uh, down there in the middle is where uh, you have the uh, entry for uh, data and uh, addresses and, and that's of course for you no know, manual operation uh, and debugging right so you can manually enter an address uh, actually no this is data so data is 32 bits uh, four times eight and you see that the indicators have an extra light that's parity so every byte has a parity byte and there's a weird button here uh, and that's called actually parity reverse so parity is generated automatically but for some weird reason uh, for debugging purposes you can push this one and it will change parity And data can be you know, either read or uh, input, and you, you, see, you see the, the lights on top. Uh, and at the bottom, you have the address switches, um, which can also be used uh, for operating the channels. So, the, so you see some white markings here, and there are special uh, channels addresses uh, when you use the blue button that I. Uh, showed you before uh, and uh, the row of lights at the top you have uh, these are all the air lights so this is this this row here so the most important light is that fellow over here uh, the master check right so if you have an air the thing stops and then you have to figure out what went wrong uh, so there is all kind of uh, air lights and towards the left here uh, there is the FLT the fault location uh, test lights so we'll, we'll talk about them later if uh, 
here you can select which uh, memory location you work on. Apparently there are four of them. Uh, main memory, local memory, which I suppose is cache or equivalent to cache, and uh, multiplex and some something that's called protect, which I don't know yet what it is. I haven't read enough. Over here is a little cheat sheet to uh, work the channel addresses, uh, which are hardwired mostly. Uh, and uh, down here is a series of interesting switches here, where you can do, uh, that's for deep debugging here, you can do uh, tests and stop the machine or sync uh, a, a an oscilloscope on some special uh, conditions. So this is the instruction address match. Uh, so normal is in process, but you can have it stop uh, when it matches a, an address that you have set in the address switches. So uh, it's the equivalent of setting a, uh, a debug point in, our, in, your, uh, in, in your software. Uh, then you can do the same trick uh, with the micro instruction. And that's the uh, set of switches next to it. Uh, and you can do the same trick by matching a uh, storage address compare. So you can basically put stop um, and breakpoints uh, manually by a combination of those switches and, and then it will match the address that you have put in the switches over here and stop the processor. Uh, and then there's a few more uh, I'd like to show you. There's of course the lamp test, duh. Um, but uh, my, my favorite one is, 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 is the force indicator. And I, I wanted really hard to be, uh, for that to be the Star Wars switch when the when everything else fails, you use the force. Uh, but no, it has to do with the uh, FLTs, uh, which are the fault locator tests. And uh, so it's not as fun as I thought. Uh, and so this controls how the uh, uh, fault locator tests work, uh, which we're going to talk more about when we move to other section of the panel. Uh, so here we have, uh, the counters. So two counters, one uh, when it's in regular mode, when your machine runs, and that's the one that IBM makes you pay for. Uh, so this one has 9,000 and something on it, and we don't know how many times it, <laughs> it went over. This is the CE key, uh, customer engineer key switch, uh, that will switch it to the maintenance counter uh, for uh, which you won't be billed. Um, and uh, next over here are some of the main manual operation buttons. Um, so you have start and that's the button you will use uh, to load some memory. Uh, and you push start and with, you load what you had put in the keys into the memory. Uh, and then you can run the processor in the normal mode, in single step, so one instruction at a time, or single cycle, uh, which I suppose is a micro instruction or part of a micro instruction at a time. And then you can stop it and bring it in manual mode, uh, which gives you access to uh, the other keys. Uh, once in stop mode, so these become act active, so you can do a system reset you can do a PSW restart, basically it's a reset and it starts at address zero and loads code from there. Uh, check reset, uh, that's a switch we have on the 1401 also that uh, you know, turns the errors, uh, clears the errors. Uh, set IC, that's one you use uh, to set the instruction counter. Uh, so you would put addresses over here and then press set instruction counter and it would, you know, it would force a jump to that instruction. 
uh, store if that's if you want to store uh, in a certain address you would, you would put the data over the switch at the top and uh, press store and we, it will load the data at, at the memory address at the bottom displays the inverse when you read it and logout if i understand well is to do a uh, dump i suspect on the printer or on something like that of the state of the machine uh, and here a few of the uh, uh, control knobs, uh, the process control in normal, uh, disable, stop, or channel stop. So it, it basically defines what the processor will do when it encounters an error. And then there's this uh, other one I, I talked about, which is the uh, FLT, which is the fault location uh, test, uh, where you can have the machine, uh, if you put it in the FLT mode, you can have the machine uh, do a series of tests and uh, you can have repeat the tests, uh, stop if it encounters a problem uh, and, and other uh, modes like this. And what will happen is that it will go through a series of hardware, hardwired tests and display uh, the result, it is a pass or fail light here uh, in which uh, test it was operating, etc. So I understand it has a whole suite of uh, hardwire tests that it can uh, do. And then finally, uh, we are at the bottom right of the panel, and that's the one the regular operator would use, uh, not not the IBM customer engineer. And it has a big power on button and power off. And uh, here are uh, the uh, rollers uh, or the, the rotary controllers for entering the address from your start device. Uh, so which channel it is and which address on the channel. And you would start uh, your disk or your magnetic device on which you have your uh, boot code. And you would press load and it would, uh, you know, in what it would boot, but IBM doesn't call it boot, it calls it IPL, uh, initial program load. And uh, here you have the uh, main indicator lights system when it's running, manual when you have stopped it, wait when it's in a wait uh, state, test when any of the test switches uh, like the memory or the FLT is on, uh, and load when it's uh, doing IPL. And I said, there you have it. Uh, of course, you know, the whole difficulty here is to uh, understand what the register do, and there are so many of them, it's just mind boggling that they. Um, but when you had a, a machine made of you know, hundreds of thousands of parts uh, that could and would all fail, uh, you needed to have that degree. Uh, of uh, uh, you know, test lights in them and uh, to be able to maintain, t maintain them easily. And therefore, the blinking light front panels, which are still very pretty today. So give a hand to the uh, IBM uh, 360 Model 50 uh, front control panel. And the deal here will be to try to uh, make a replica of the IBM CPU and try to bring this panel to uh, life. Uh, and that's, of course, going to be a very major and long project. So it's a multi-year affair here. So for now, it's just a static display just for looks.